Good morning, everybody. At about four or five minutes uh, after 10 o'clock, we'll call the annual meeting to order. Would you please uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which stands one nation under God with liberty and, and liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Traditionally at this point uh, in the meeting, we observe uh, a moment of silence for uh, those residents who have uh, passed away since the last town meeting. So I'll ask you uh, for a moment of silence uh, to remember those that have gone by. Thank you. Um, some announcements before we get underway uh, about voting and the ballot box. Uh, please don't deliver the ballots before the vote is called. And remember, you can't deliver a ballot for somebody else. Uh, for the elderly or disabled, uh, the, the box will be brought to you once the rush is over, assuming people are rushing to vote. And uh, that's that. Uh, don't forget there's a pie breakfast Saturday, March 21st, right here, I believe, 8.30 to 10.30. Uh, as adults, it's your right to have breakfast first in the morning, and you should exercise that right. Uh, there are ballots, Australian ballots in the back uh, for our, the Hazen budget, I believe, the Unified Elementary Union budget, uh, for a primary election uh, and the JPs, so don't forget to visit them. No JPs this year. No JPs this year. Uh, you'll notice the uh, buffet up front, run by the uh, friends of uh, Woodbury Elementary. Uh, please help yourself. It's for a good cause, all funds are for that organization, Friends of Woodbury. And I've been bought this item. HCTV Channel 16 is moving to Channel 1080, 1080 on Comcast Cable. Switch your dial by May 2020. All right. And also, at the beginning of the meeting, it's uh, traditional, traditional to uh, read the ground rules for those of you who have forgotten them since last year. Uh, Robert's rules of order are the basic rules of order for this meeting, except where Vermont law takes precedence. Uh, the body cannot change Vermont state law, but you can change Robert's rules with a two-thirds vote uh, if you desire. An article has to be moved and seconded by the body and then restated by the moderator before it's under consideration and debate may begin. Uh, after the moderator restates the motion, the person who made the motion has the right to speak first. Articles can have only one amendment associated with them at a time and amendments to an article can also have one amendment associated uh, with them at one time. After you've spoken on a particular article, you will not be recognized a second time during discussion until other voters who wish to speak on the issue for the first time are given an opportunity to do so. Robert's Rules only allows a given speaker to speak twice on a given motion and limits the duration of speeches to 10 minutes. Uh, in terms of voting, division of the House can be requested by one voter before or after a voice vote. That means you have to, instead of saying aye or nay, you stand up and raise your hands and are counted uh, on a vote for a particular article. 
Vermont state law provides for a paper ballot vote on the request of seven voters. So if somebody moves for a paper ballot, there have to be six other people who agree to have a paper ballot. That will give you seven people, then the voting is by paper ballot. All motions, remarks, and discussions must be addressed to the moderator. I'll do my best to recognize you in the order that you've raised your hands. You must be recognized to speak, even to move the previous question. After being recognized, please stand up, wait for a microphone. Well, the microphone's right here. Uh, either shout or please come up to the microphone uh, and say your piece when you're recognized. Your speeches must be confined to the merits of the question. You'll not be allowed to engage in personal attacks on a member of the body or their motives. Uh, Vermont state law prohibits considerations of articles that have not been warned. Uh, this means you cannot take binding action under the article uh, other business and you can't amend warned articles such that they would deal with business that uh, hasn't been warned or that pushes the article into uh, some completely different configuration. All right. Someone uh, asked me about talking uh, about the school budget. The school budget, uh, there's no school budget article on the warning, but if uh, you wish to discuss the school budget article, you may do so when we get to the uh, other business article. Okay. All right. Off we go. The first item of business is to elect a moderator. Article one. Who shall be elected moderator to govern the town meetings for the ensuing year? Are there nominations for moderator for the ensuing year? David. I nominate Steve Fryhofner. Steve Fryhofner is nominated. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations for moderator for one year? Without objection, then, by unanimous consent, we'll close the uh, nominations. All those in favor of Steve Freihofner being moderator for one year, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, and Steve Freihofner is elected. Thank you. <laughs> Wait till the end for the. <laughs> All right, Article Two. Uh, what action will the town take in regard to the printed report of the town officials for the year ending December 31, 2019? Uh, someone has to move this article, and then there's kind of an informal process uh, in which you can ask various officers about the uh, report. Uh, you can ask for explanations or uh, of various subjects covered in the report, and, uh, but you can't go into the warned business of the day. That will have to come underneath the articles. So is there uh, a motion to uh, approve the report? S Skip Marchinese. Did I pronounce it right this year? Marcus Sani. Okay. One more year. <laughs> <laughs> Moved. Is there a second? There's a second. All right. Is there any discussion about the town report? Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, let's go to the vote. Uh, all those who approve the printed town report as presented, please say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. And the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and the report is accepted. The next article is to elect town officers. The first officer to elect is that of town treasurer for a term of three years. Are there nominations for town treasurer? Ron. Brandy Smith is nominated. Are there other nominations? Hearing none, by unanimous consent, without objection, we'll close the nominations. Although, excuse me, no, I'm hearing things again, I guess. 
All those in favor of Brandy Smith uh, for town treasurer for a term of three years, please say aye. Aye. Is opposed, and Brandy Smith is elected town treasurer. The next uh, officer to be elected is a select board member for a term of three years. Are there nominations for select board member for a term of three years? Michael Gray is nominated. Who's Patty. Patty Garvin. Michael Gray is nominated. Are there other nominations? Hearing none, uh, without objection, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of uh, Michael Gray to be select board member for three years, please say aye. aye. Opposed? And Michael Gray is elected select board member for three years. Um, I'm going to restate that motion just to make things clean. The, the office of select board member has to be elected by a paper ballot. So I'm going to restate that uh, <clears throat> motion with only one nomination for a select board member. Is there a motion for the clerk to cast one ballot for Michael Gray for select board member? Moved, is there a second? Any discussion on this motion? All those in favor of the clerk casting one ballot for Michael Gray for a select board member for three years, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? And the clerk will cast one ballot and Michael Gray is elected. <clears throat> the next town officer is that of Lister. This also requires a paper ballot. Are there any nominations for Lister? Skip. Ron Wells is nominated. Are there any other nominations for Lister for a term of three years? Uh, hearing none, and there being one candidate, does somebody want to make a motion for the clerk to cast one ballot for Ron Wells for Lister for three years? Roy does. Is there a second? Michael, thank you. And a discussion on this motion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the clerk casting one ballot for Ron Wells to be Lister for three years, please say aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Ron Wells is elected Lister for three years. The next position to be elected is auditor for three years. Uh, this also requires a paper ballot. Are there nominations for the position of auditor for three years? Nominations for auditor for three years. Yes. Robin Durkee. Robin Durkee. Is Robin here? I just saw her. There you go. Hi, Robin. All right. She's not saying anything. That's a good sign. Are there other nominations for auditor for a term of three years? All right. Uh, without objection and by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations. <clears throat> and. Uh, is there a motion for the clerk to cast one ballot for Robin Gowan for the position of auditor for three years? Up. So, where's Robin Gowan? She's not here this year? All right, I'll have to tell her myself. Are there, is there a motion for the clerk to cast one ballot for Robin Durkee for auditor for uh, three years? Moved, is there a second? Seconded, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, we haven't met. What's your name? Justin Brown. Jonathan. Justin Brown. Justin Brown. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor of the clerk casting one ballot for Robin Durkee for auditor for three years, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Robin Durkee is elected auditor for three years. The next position to be elected is that of delinquent tax collector. Are there nominations for a delinquent tax collector? 
Nominations for delinquent tax collector for a term of one year. Ron Wells is nominated. You said that? Second, not necessary, but often appreciated by the nominee. <laughs> Any other nominations? Hearing none, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed uh, to the vote. All those in favor of Ron Wells to be the town's delinquent tax collector for a term of one year, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Ron Wells is elected. The next position is that of... Gr I beg your pardon. I'm sorry, I can't hear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you uh, for that. That's uh, an issue that the collector of delinquent taxes will have to deal with, I suppose, um, in the course of the business of collecting delinquent taxes. The next position uh, to be elected is that of a grand juror for one year. Grand juror for one year. Are there nominations for grand juror for one year? Retta Dunlap is nominated. Are there other nominations? Other nominations for grand juror? Hearing none. By unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Retta Dunlap for a grand juror for a term of one year, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Retta Dunlap is elected. The next uh, position to be elected is for town law agent for a term of one year. Are there nominations for town law agent? Susan. Retta Dunlap is nominated. Are there other nominations? Are there nominations for town law agent? Hearing none, without objection, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Retta Dunlap to be town law agent for one year, please say aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Retta Dunlap is elected town law agent for one year. The next position is that of cemetery commissioner for a term of five years. A cemetery commissioner for five years. Are there nominations for cemetery commissioner for five years? I nominate Patty Garbeck. Patty Garbeck is nominated. Are there other nominations? Hearing none. Uh, without objection, by unanimous consent, let's close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Patty Garbeck to be cemetery commissioner for a term of five years, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Patty Garbeck is elected cemetery commissioner for a term of five years. Uh, the next several offices to be elected one at a time are uh, library trustee. The first library trustee is for a term of three years. Are there nominations for library trustee for three years? Brandy Smith is nominated. Are there other nominations for library trustee for three years? Hearing none, without objection, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Brandy Smith to be library trustee for three years, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Brandy Smith is elected library trustee for three years. The next position to be elected is also for a library trustee for a three-year term. Are there nominations for library trustee for Robin Durkee. Robin Durkee is nominated. Are there other nominations? Hearing none, without objection, we'll close the nominations and proceed uh, to the vote. All those in favor of Robin Durkee to be a library trustee for a term of three years, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. 
The eyes appear to have it. The eyes have it and Robin Durkee is elected library trustee for a term of three years. The next position is library trustee for a term of two years. Two years. Are there nominations for library trustee for a term of two years? Lee? Lee Ferry. Lee Ferry is nominated. Are there other nominations for library trustee for a term of two years? Hearing none, without objection, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Lee Ferry to be library trustee for two years, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and Lee Ferry is elected library trustee for two years. The final library trustee position to be elected is for a term of one year. Are there nominations for library trustee for a term of one year? Skip. Ann Felt. I send my nomination. <laughs> you can do that. And I'm sorry, the, the other nomination was for? Um, I declined the nomination for one year, and instead I nominated Jane Knight. Jane Knight? Jane Knight. Ginger Etkind is nominator. nominated. Oh good, she's busy. Are there other nominations? <laughs> Are there other nominations for library trustee for one year? Hearing none, we'll close the uh, nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Ginger Etkin to be library trustee for a term of one year, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and Ginger is elected library trustee for one year. <clears throat> Somebody please give her the news when she's not busy. The next uh, uh, position to be elected is the agent to transfer real estate for a term of one year. Are there nominations for an agent to transfer real estate for a term of one year? Nominations for a real estate agent for one year. I nominate Diana. Diana Paduzzi is nominated. Are there other nominations for agent to transfer real estate? Hearing none, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Diana Paduzzi to be agent to transfer real estate for one year, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. Uh, the ayes have it and Diana Paduzzi is elected. The uh, next and final position to be filled is that of Hazen Union School District Director for a term of three years. Are there nominations for Hazen Union School District Director for three years? Nominations. I you. You is not. <laughs> Steve Freihofner is nominated. <laughs> Are there other nominations for uh, Hazen Union School Director for th three years? <clears throat> Hearing none, by unanimous consent, we'll close the nominations uh, and proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Steve Freihofner to be Hazen Union School Director for a term of three years, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? And uh, the ayes appear to have it, the ayes have it, and Steve Freihofner, is, otherwise known as you, is elected <laughs> for three years. Thank you very much. Uh, what is your pleasure with respect to Article 4? Will someone move Article 4? Article 4. Article 4 is moved. Is there a second? Article 4 is moved and seconded. <clears throat> Please listen to the article. Shall the town have its taxes paid to the town treasurer as tax receiver 60 days after tax bills are mailed, estimated due date to be October 29, 2020. Taxes would then become delinquent and be turned over to the collector of delinquent taxes for, <laughs> for collection. <laughs> with a penalty that increases by uh, one half uh, percent per month 
of delinquency to a maximum of 6% for one full year or more of delinquency and interest of 6% per year or one half percent per month. Is there any discussion of this article? Any discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 4 as presented, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 4 is passed. What, is, what are your wishes uh, with respect to Article 5? No. Article 5 is moved. Is there a second? Yes. Article 5 is moved and seconded. Please listen to Article 5. Will the voters authorize and empower the select board to borrow money on the credit of the town? Is there any discussion of that article? Any discussion of that article? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 5, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 5 is passed. We move on to Article 6. What is your pleasure with Article 6? Is there a motion to move Article 6? Article 6 is moved. Is there a second? and seconded. Please listen to Article 6. Will the voters authorize and empower the select board to borrow money to pay current expenses in anticipation of taxes raised and uncollected? Is there any discussion on this article? Any discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 6, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 6 is passed. Let's proceed to Article 7. What is your pleasure with regard to Article 7? Is there a motion to approve it? Article 7 is moved. Is there a second? And seconded. Very interesting, Roy. I don't know if you can move and second the same motion. <laughs> Make me study. The uh, Article 7 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on Article 7? Any discussion on Article 7? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. Please listen to the article. Shall the town appropriate $17,850 to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department to be added to the truck replacement fund? All those in favor of Article 7, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 7 is passed. We now move on to Article 8. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 8 of the warning? What is your pleasure with respect to Article 8? Is there someone who will move Article 8? Article 8 is moved is it, and seconded. Please listen to Article 8. Shall the town appropriate $102,682 to fund the operations of the Woodbury Fire Department, including the capital replacement fund for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2020. Uh, yeah, 2020 is right. Any discussion on the article? Any discussion on Article 8? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor? of Article 8, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 8 is passed. We move to Article 9. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 9? Is there someone who will move Article 9? Article 9. It's moved. Is there a second? 
Seconded. Please listen to the article as written. Shall the town appropriate $10,000 for the purpose of hiring a qualified vendor to assist the Woodbury Planning Commission in creating a 2020 town plan? Is there any discussion on Article 9? Peter Peltz. Uh, what will this do to uh, finally, finally get our uh, submission done? What was the expected date Did everybody hear that? The question is, I think, Peter, if I will restate it, is uh, when is that study expected to be done? And how will that affect the final submission for the town report the town plan to be approved? And how will it affect the final submission of the town plan to be approved? Is there somebody who can speak on that? Uh, could you speak up, please, Skip? So Peter, to answer your question, uh, we're hoping to get the plan completed in the calendar year 2020. Calendar year 2020. If that's not possible, certainly by the calendar year 2021. Uh, the reason why the Planning Commission is requesting these funds is that we were unsuccessful in getting a grant from the Department of Housing and Community Development. We were among several dozen towns who applied for grant monies totaling $850,000. However, there was only $450,000 in monies available. So Woodbury, along with numerous other communities, were not successful in their, their grant application. However, there is a possibility of another grant, round of grants for this year, 2020. And the Planning Commission will resubmit their grant and hopefully be successful. There was nothing wrong with our grant application. It was complete and it passed muster of the Department of Housing and Community Development. It's just that there were too many other you know, people seeking grants. Yes, Norm. Well, uh, the village grant, the village plan will be an addendum to the municipal plan. We'll look at that and refresh it if, if needed. I believe that village plan was completed in 2016 or 2017. Uh, no. no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was. Right, that'll be part of the uh, overall municipal plan, along with our enhanced energy plan, which we're working through now, which we have some issues with regarding uh, cold, cold weather heat pumps as opposed to uh, wood, burning, wood burning stoves and, and things like that. Well, you really want to know that? Okay, so our town plan was initially completed in the year 2003. There was a rewrite started in 2016. However, that rewrite didn't pass muster with the Regional Planning Commission. So that being said, we're working off a 2003 town plan. And also, our zoning ordinance was taken from that town plan. So our zoning ordinance is circa 2006. So we are far behind the, the wheel, if you want to call it, in terms of having a timely town plan and zoning regulations. So if you turn, if you turn to page 66 in the town report, that's the abridged version of why we believe we need a town plan. And it's more germane now if you, if you read the Hard Rock Gazette, the uh, a lead on the first page regarding a reconfiguration or a possible reconfiguration of the OSSU district, the uh, elementary district. And they talk briefly in that article about closing some of the schools. So with that, we have to include in our municipal plan a strategic path forward as to what to do with this building if it should close. You know, what's it going to look like? It can't just be a pickleball court. You know, we have to utilize it for something more, more community-centric, if you want to call it. Skip. The town has been without a town plan 
since 2008. 2008. Okay. Mike. Michael. Oh. What's the phone call for a doctor? Every eight years, a town plan should be revisited. The protocol will be, when we applied for the grant, let me give you some background information. When we applied for, for the grant, the commission put together a project plan. And that project plan included a Gantt chart, which chartered the course for community involvement, and it laid out specific timelines for the community involvement. So we believe that we were gonna to put together a series of eight meetings for all the municipality to get together and to talk about you know what's important what should be included in the plan above and beyond what the state believes should be included in the plan and make it more woodbury centric than you know just a normal you know state plan you know just focused on woodbury so you know we're working on it we have a four member planning commission and we believe that we need more members to include more ideas. Dave Barnowski is, is one of the members. Michael Gray is a member. And uh, so we need some help. The state has published a 133-page planning module. And those are guidelines that we have to follow in order to have our plan complete. So that's a comprehensive drone of a document. Any other questions? Is there any further discussion, sir? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Yeah, we would put out an RFP. Our purchasing policy requires that anything any purchase or service over $8,000 requires a formal request for proposal. So we would put out a request for proposal for uh, vendors who could do the work. And there are, there are several in the area that can do the work. And then we'd make an assessment of who the, perhaps not the lowest cost, but the most uh, qualified. And that run that by the members of the planning commission and make our recommendations to the select board who would have the final say on the expenditure. Is there any further discussion on Article 9? Any further discussion on Article 9? Thank you, Skip. If there's no further discussion on Article 9, let's proceed to the vote. Please listen to Article 9 as written. Shall the town appropriate $10,000 for the purpose of hiring a qualified vendor to assist the Woodbury Planning Commission in creating a 2020 town plan? All those in favor of Article 9, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 9 is passed. We uh, next come to Article 10. What's your pleasure? with respect to Article 10 of the warning. Article 10 is moved. Is there a second? Seconded by Skip. Is there any discussion? Any discussion of this article? Hearing none. Let's proceed to the vote. Please listen to the article as written. Shall the town appropriate $12,000 for the support of the Woodbury Community Library? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it and Article 10 is passed. We proceed to Article 11. What is your pleasure with respect to Article 11? Article 11 is moved. Is there a second? Is there a second to Article 11? Article 11 is seconded. Please listen to the article. Shall the town appropriate $7,000 for the support of the Woodbury Cemeteries? Is there any discussion on this article? Any discussion on Article 11? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. I'll read the article again. Shall the town appropriate $7,000 for the support of the Woodbury Cemeteries? All those in favor of Article 11, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say nay. 
The eyes appear to have it. The eyes have it and Article 11 is passed. We move to Article 12. Oh, we just voted on Article 11. Do you want to change your motion? The motion is to consolidate Articles 12 to 35 into one vote. That means you'll be voting each item in one vote. There's a motion to consolidate. Is there a second? It's seconded. All right. Any discussion? Any discussion on the consolidation motion? If there is none, let's proceed to vote on the consolidation. If you do vote to consolidate, then the next thing I will do is to propose all of those items to you as one article to be voted on. But first we have to vote to consolidate if you wish to do that. All those in favor of consolidating Article 12 through 35, please say aye. aye. All those, point of order, Norman. I beg your pardon? I can see I presume, can somebody speak to whether those are two different organizations? Uh, first of all, separate organizations. Okay. I see. Okay. We'll think of something, Norman. All right, so uh, let's, let's start again here. All those in favor of consolidating article, Articles 12 through 35, inclusive, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say nay. Yeah. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the motion to consolidate uh, passes. So. Uh, now we move to the consolidated uh, article. Uh, what is your pleasure with respect to the consolidated articles 12 through 35? Will somebody move the consolidated articles? Move Moved by su and seconded? Second. Seconded. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Patrick. I'd just like to make a minor point for future consideration because I support the motion and I support all these articles. But Article 10, 11, 12, and 13 all have to do with Woodbury specific services, right? And then from Article 14, uh, 15 on, um, they're the general county or community services, right? I'm just trying to draw a small distinction here, that in the future it seems to me we might want to vote on Woodbury specific articles and keep them separate from the more county-wide articles. That's all I want to say, don't want to change the motion, I just want to make that point. Is there any other discussion? on the consolidated motion. Any other discussion? If not, let's proceed to the vote, and I will read to you the consolidated, the articles as consolidated. Shall the town appropriate $976 to the Woodbury Callis food shelf? Shall the town appropriate $500 to the Sylvia Jackson Fund? Uh, 
excuse me, I'll start with 12. Shall the town appropriate $1,000 for the Friends of Woodbury Elementary School? Shall the town appropriate $976 to the Woodbury Callus Food Shelf? Shall the town appropriate $500 to the Sylvia Jackson Fund? Shall the town appropriate $750 to aid to women, men, and children in abuse and rape emergencies? That's aware. Shall the town appropriate $250 to the American Red Cross of New Hampshire and Vermont? Shall the town appropriate $600 to the Central Vermont Adult Basic Education Organization? Shall the town appropriate $750 to Central Vermont Council on Aging? Shall the town appropriate $300 to the Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation? Shall the town appropriate $2,000 to the Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice Incorporated? Shall the town appropriate $650 to Circle, the Battered Woman Services? Shall the town appropriate $100 to the Family Center of Washington County? Shall the town appropriate $484 to Green Mountain Transit? Shall the town appropriate $50 to Green Up Vermont? Shall the town appropriate $300 to the Hardwick Area Community Justice Center? Shall the town appropriate $750 to Hardwick Community Television? Shall the town appropriate $200 to Our House of Central Vermont? Shall the town appropriate $100 to the People's Health and Wellness Clinic? Shall the town appropriate $500 to Rural Community Transportation? Shall the town appropriate $200 to the Sexual Assault Crisis Team? Shall the town appropriate $1,000 to the Twin Valley Senior Center? Shall the town appropriate $210 to the Vermont Center for Independent Living? Shall the town appropriate $100 to the Vermont, Vermont Rural Fire Protection Task Force for the Dry Hydrant Program? Shall the town appropriate $1,000 to the Washington County Mental Health Services? Shall the town appropriate $500 to the Washington County Youth Service Bureau? You've heard the article. Let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the consolidated articles 12 through 35, please say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the consolidated articles pass. The next, the next article is Article 36. Please listen to Article 36. What amount shall be budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for general purposes for the period from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021? And shall the select board be authorized to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same? Is there a motion to move Article 36? I'd like to make a motion that the amount of budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for general purposes for the period from July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021 be $335,420.70. There's a motion uh, to budget $335,420.70. Did I get that right, Michael? As the uh, uh, amount for uh, Article 36. Is there a second? Is there a second? Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on Article 36? Any discussion on Article 36? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of Article 36, uh, let me read it to you again. Uh, and the amount at stake here is uh, in the motion is $335,420.70. Shall that amount be budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for general purposes for the period from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021? And shall the select board be authorized to set a tax, tax rate sufficient to provide for the same? All those in favor of Article 36, please say aye. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. And Article 36 passes. We proceed to Article 37. Please listen to the article. 
What amount shall be budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for highway purposes for the period from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021? And shall the select board be authorized to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same? Is there someone who will move Article 37? I'd like to make a motion that the amount budgeted to meet the expenses and liabilities for the town for the highway purposes for the period from July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021 be $556,520. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Motion is made and seconded. Please listen to the article with the specific amount. Shall the town budget $556,520 exactly to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for highway purposes for the period from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021? And shall the select board be authorized to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same? Is there any discussion on that article? Norman. Well, we've done that for a few years now. Um, it just uh, makes for more clarity, and with a new accounting system that we have, um, NEMREC, it just um, we it helps the select board, people in town, just track better expenses for the town highways and, and distinct from this kind of general government um, program. So it's, it's more for clarity and uh, accountability. The state requires it. And, oh, and Diana just told me the state requires it, so <laughs> what do we have? <laughs> it seems to make sense. <laughs> Is there further discussion other than the state requiring clarity? Peter. That's, that's not going to happen. We, we had that proposal. Um, last year we had a number of people in town who really objected to that, so we just, we just dropped it. Uh, people were mostly worried about speeding along the Cabot Road if it was paved all the way up. Plus, we had planned on paving um, to the new entrance that the quarry is planning on. Um, and so the budget for that would have been like over a million dollars, right around a million dollars. And it was just a big chunk of money. It would have been paid, 80% of that would have been paid by VTrans, but even at the town's 20% was a pretty big chunk of money. Um, so we just, I mean, it could happen in the future, but. There were a lot of people that really objected to that, and the select board just decided to listen to them and um, and drop the pro uh, that project. How much did the quarry uh, owners uh, willing to contribute? They weren't willing to contribute anything. I mean, they do contribute every year in the reimbursement that we get, and part of that money from the quarry goes into our paving fund. They were willing to lend the town the money at the town's match, but we would have had to have had to pay the quarry back um, for that. So, I mean, they they do reimburse the town every year. It's thirty thousand plus dollars. Um, a part of that goes into the paving fund. Um, but it was just again, it was just a big chunk of money, and with people kind of objecting to us doing that. Um, the select board decided not to do it. At this point of information, if anybody can have the uh, public discussion about the quarry that we had at the library, the history of the quarry, but that quarry is putting out more than property in the country. That's something in the and Yeah, and they have plans to put out put out more. They've passed an Act 250 process to, to increase the extraction rate at the quarry. Page 41, you'll see a summary of where the uh, Swenson distribution has gone in the last few years, or the last year, anyway. Is there any further discussion? Yes, David. Um, if they're going to increase their output, will they also be increasing their reimbursement to the town? Yes. Yeah. That's a percentage rate. Would be six, six cents per cubic foot. All of the questions? The question was if there's an increase. Uh, 
it's at six and a half cents per uh, usable cubic uh, yard, yards or cubic, foot. cubic foot of usable granite. So they give us a report on how much granite that they extracted from the quarry that's usable for them, and I don't quite know how they determine that, but, um, and then we, the town gets six and a half cents per cubic foot. has been submitted. We haven't heard of whether or not the town got it or not, but that's about $28,000 of this year's town highway budget if we do get the grant. Um, and that would, basically the, the road would be all of the erosion. There's a, it's a very complicated spot. Um, so we would have somebody do some engineering to fix, you know, to consider the uh, runoff from the roads and the driveways and the school parking lot. Um, the hope is to, to, that if we get the grant, um, that we would do the preliminary work on the road base and also pave that section from the school parking lot down and in the village common area, hopefully before next winter. Um, so that's in the works. And if we don't get the grant, we're probably going to spend the money and do it anyway. Robin. for the work, the preliminary work that would be done on this, the road surface. Um, there would be some grading. We're trying to fix the flooding in the annex building um, and then have the water uh, flow um, so that it doesn't, we're also trying not to um, have erosion run into the Kingsbury branch, which is right there. Um, and so part of the work in the, in the engineering is to try to channel that water into different catch basins. Um, and then just for your information, we also have um, final design grants for four uh, erosion, um, runoff, uh, flooding, devices, I'll call them, that um, will also be put in place. Um, this work that we hope to have done this coming summer will also be in anticipation of those. Um, but those actual devices, will pro it'll probably be a number of years before they're actually in place. Um, so, so the only increase to this year's highway budget is that road rate? That's, the, that's pretty much the amount that the highway budget increased this year reflects the, the project that we have that we're anticipating here in the village. I mean, there are probably other small things um, in there, but I'm, I'm not, I'd have to look at the, uh, the itemized budgets to be able to tell you what those are. Um, okay. Robert Martin. Robert Martin, you're recognized. We're working on something right at the moment. I don't, um, there is a used grader available from the town of East Montpelier. We're, we're kind of looking into, um, you know, how much repair it needs, how much expense the town will have to, if they want to buy it, um, how much money we have available to pay for it, what the uh, loan uh, interest rate would be, you know, stuff like that. So it's something that's just, uh, it's being discussed um, now. Um, but we haven't made a decision. Yeah, that's why we're hoping that this used one might work. It would be less than 50% of what a new one would cost. 
Um, so that, that's the way the numbers are looking right now. So it might be too good of a deal to pass up. We'll have to see. Is there any further discussion on Article 37? Skip. Just one clarification. I think I, I, I heard Mike say that the paving of the, uh, of the road from the school to the parking lot entrance down to the intersection of Route 14 and the common parking area for the Village Center, the old school, the town hall, the fire department, the post office. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And that would all be covered by money that the town already has in its paving fund. Is there any further discussion on Article 37? Any further discussion on Article 37? If there's not, we'll proceed to the vote. Please listen to the article with the relevant amount. Shall the town budget $556,520 exactly to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for highway purposes for the period from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021? And shall the select board be authorized to set a tax rate sufficient to provide the same? All those in favor of Article 37, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and Article 37 is passed. Uh, we next move to Article 38 to transact any other business that may legally come before the meeting. I'll remind you that uh, any vote or action taken under this article is purely advisory, not binding, and that's the purpose of this article. Is there any other business to Chantac. Peter. Um, as, uh, I, think I'm, I believe I'm chair of the Woodbury Fund, and we've already uh, committed ourselves to help with the restoration of the uh, property that was the uh, close country store that was torn down. My question is, uh, what's, what's the talk of the town leaders about how, how that's going to be processed in terms of what we want there and how it's going to, uh, to evolve? Did everybody hear the question? The question is, uh, how uh, how will the uh, works proceed at the site of the old uh, store here? Uh, what's in store for work on that area? And how the, how the townspeople will be involved in that. There, there are some pretty severe restrictions by FEMA. We can do landscaping, but we can't do uh, we can't do any buildings. We can't give the property away unless we gave it to another nonprofit. Um, there, you can do a little grab a parking lot. You can do like a gazebo or something, but I don't think there's room for that. So we're going to work on. Uh, a landscaping plan and get you an application by April 1st. Well, I contacted Russell Richardson. So you want to? You know, I. It's it's fine if people in town, or you know, if we want to have a meeting and discuss it, or a small committee to make a plan, that that would be great. If we, if people want to be involved, we also have to have. You know, we've thought of. Um, kind of a reconstruction to the stream. So we had a, a, a date to look at the stream with um, a fellow named Jaron Borg, who's a state uh, a &R, v trans stream specialist. Anything that we do to alter the stream bank itself, um, and there are plans to do that, um, would, be need, would need to be approved by the state. So um, that's kind of out of our hands. Um, we'll have to do what you know, we can discuss that with someone, but we'll pretty much be doing what they tell us to do there. But as far as the property itself, um, you know, if people have ideas of what they'd like to see there, um, there's no reason we can't have a group of people meet and, you know, have a committee or whatever and, and do that. That would be, that would be wonderful if people want to do that. Yeah. Phoebe Slater. Hi 
everyone. Um, so my name is Phoebe Slater, and I am a school board director. Um, I've been on the Woodbury School Board for a couple of years, and now have served, this is my first year on the merged elementary school board, um, and just was renewed, just renewed my position for three years on the merged school board. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to update you all on, on happenings at the elementary level. Um, as you know, we are, you know, things have shifted quite a bit, um, and usually we take time on this day to kind of talk about school happenings. Um, we had our budget informational meeting last night, um, and thanks to Patrick Flood, who represented Woodbury and did a great job of asking lots of good questions. Um, but it's just a different format. Um, and as for the budget, um, the elementary for Woodbury is decreasing slightly this year, and Hazen budget is decreasing slightly this year. So we hope that Woodbury continues the tradition of supporting the schools. Um, as for what's happening, uh, on page 69 of the town report, there is a you know, list of things, great things that have happened um, so far in the school year and some good pictures of our students in action. Um, and this buffet and the um, our little post server there also kind of shows off the great things that are happening at Woodbury School. Um, we have welcomed Craig Wilson to the Woodbury campus as our new principal this year who has brought great energy and focus um, for our building. And he's here somewhere, but I don't see him in the room. So thank you to Craig. Um, let's see, uh, we do at Woodbury, on the Woodbury campus, continue to um, focus on our uh, the vision of outdoor learning and community and personalized learning through student voice and choice. Um, we have um, lots of great uh, community support, and I actually want to take this opportunity to thank you all for whether you're participating um, through Four Winds or um, coming to grandparents' lunch day or helping to fit our little ones into ice skates to get out during PE class on our little community ice rink. Um, a lot of involvement, which makes our school and our community so great. Um, Let's see, what else am I remembering? Um, so I also, Woodbury, it's interesting because even at these merged meetings, when I look out at the audience, which is typically not a very big audience, um, I can always count on Woodbury folks to be in, in the room. Um, case in point, last night, Patrick was the one asking questions. And um, at other meetings, we typically have, a, for our small town, a majority of the folks that are participating in our school board meetings. So thank you all for that as well. And I encourage you as we move forward to participate. Um, I know there was a mention about, or there's questions actually in the air about Woodbury and the future of our school. Um, and uh, Skip mentioned that earlier, I, I believe, about um, the town plan. Um, and at this point, I just want to be real clear that the current school board, um, which is merged of representatives from Standard, Greensboro, Woodbury, and Hardwick, um, has no plans to, to close any of the three campuses. Um, we are, uh, the, the board really sees value in all of the three campuses and communities and has begun um, discussions around trying to bring out the strengths of these campuses and communities and to best serve, um, better serve the, our, the needs of our students while also focusing on sustainability as well. So we um, will have lenses that we're looking through in terms of best practices for our students and financial viability, but um, we have begun a series of meetings where um, in addition to our regular board meetings, which are the first Wednesdays of each month, we have a second meeting now that's just focused on the future of these three elementary campuses and how can we um, improve learning opportunities for, for students and make our learning um, these opportunities viable financially and sustainably. Um, and so it, we're really just at the brainstorming phase of this and we really want um, community members to come forward and listen to each other and share ideas um, and uh, then we will be going through a process to vet these, these ideas through the lenses that I mentioned. Um, our next meeting, um, on um, this topic is March 9th here at Woodbury um, at 6 o'clock, so hopefully we'll get a, um, a good crew to come and represent and s hear the ideas that are being presented and, and come forward and participate in that discussion. Um, so I think that's it for now. Thank you. Phoebe, I think there was one question from the back of the room. Mm -hmm. 
shaking back there. I'm like shaking. I, I don't, I'm not good at public speaking. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. Um, thanks for keeping me up here, Alex. <laughs> um, uh, the two year period is, um, we're, we're finishing up the first year of the two year period where it's two representatives from um, the four towns that are in the elementary merge, um, Woodbury, Standard, Lake uh, Greensboro, and Hardwick. Um, after the two years, we are transitioning um, to a 5-2-2-1, I believe. I'm speaking off the top of my head, a 5 2, two one configuration where there's five representatives from Hardwick, two from Woodbury, two from Greensboro, and one from Standard. Um, and we've started kind of that transition. Like I was just re-elected now for a three-year term um, and some of the other, so it's it's starting to shift, but eventually after the two years, we'll go to that 5 2, two one which is interesting um, because right now, even with the 2-2-2-2, two, 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 uh, Woodbury, uh, Hardwick has, only one of those positions filled, so it will be interesting to see how they are able. So hopefully we'll get some, some people involved, and um, but that is, we still have another year under this 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two configuration. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Can I sit down? <laughs> Other questions while I'm up here? <laughs> Thank yes. No, no. Good thinking, though. <laughs> Is there any other business that may be... Norman. I think there was a hand up over here somewhere. Yes, please. <clears throat> I don't know that this has anything to do with louder. Closer to the mic. I'm close. Should I sing a song or <laughs> test? Okay. Um, I don't know that this has anything to do with town meeting, and it may be infrastructure stuff with the state, but the road going from Woodbury down by the lake in toward East Callis is like driving on a gauntlet. Um, I don't know how many people have had blown tires or it's just ridiculous. Where do we go to get that road paved or repaired? Does that have to do with East Callis and Woodbury? Do we go to the state? Anybody know? v -trans. Can one of the, uh, you have to I'll recognize Michael Gray to respond to that oh, question of what the town's role is in that uh, stretch of road. Well, that's a down. state highway, so the town doesn't have any role except we have to drive on it. Um, so um, we would contact the District 7. We're in District 7, which is kind of St. Jay based, um, and we would need to contact them and start complaining a lot. I think they're already aware of it. They did pave some of the road last year, and they were going to come further up, but uh, winter kind of started coming on, so they, they stopped. As you may remember, they just barely, really didn't even finish what they were working on before. So um, I could check with VTrans to see if they have that in their um, you know, they, everything is kind of scheduled out years ahead of time, so I could check with them and find out um, if they have any plans for that. And if they don't, we can just start, I'll give you a number uh, or an email address and we could start <laughs> complaining. It is, it's pretty rough, I agree. Well, um, I don't know. 
I don't know. We could may have a town petition if you want. <laughs> if uh, you notice on, on page six, um, uh, the dedications, I mentioned that Gila, oh, right. Gila, um Mason, who was a rural mail, mail carrier mm -hmm. out of Callis and uh, rode those roads for many years. In 2013, she went around and got 110 people to sign letters and sent them to the legislature and to the governor. And and here we are, you know, many years later, they finally started doing something about it. So. Is there any other skip? I think we're facing two issues. And, and a call to the District 7 is a good idea, but when you call over there and leave a message, you don't get to talk to a person, it does say two things. There's going to be an accident with serious injuries or fatalities that gets their attention. So if somebody calls that in and says that, and then there's a serious accident where somebody's injured or uh, dies, it's on record already that we're told about that. They didn't do anything about it. So call, and that's, that's the word you've got to use. So we're going that condition. Michael McGlynn. My question is, would it be more effective if our select board contacted the state that one or two of us individuals? Is there somebody from the uh, select board that can respond to that? Uh, I don't know how, if that would be more effective or not, but the select board would be more than happy to do that if, if that's what the town um, wishes. Well, the worst part is, the is there any other business? Yeah. Robert. I stopped in the Mark Consulier Highway Park, and uh, they have their lunch at 11 30. Yes. We got an air, but the air is prior. You're looking. Oh, wait, are they there? That's there every year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there any other business regarding business that is in the town's purview <laughs> to come before the meeting? Ron. Can you speak up, please, Ron? I'd like to know who's responsible for keeping the truck the driveway down in front of the old store, the whole point of plow burn all this time, the kind of palm burn, keeping it done? It's so close down there. Can yeah, somebody, yeah. Um, I can respond to that. Um, that has been kind of a frustrating and confusing mess this winter. There have been a number of people kind of doing different plowing things there. The people that live in what used to be the our new old store, um, sometimes they'll park on both sides of the road, which is what I saw when I came here today. So the highway crew can't get through there to plow. They're supposed to take care of the front of their building, which they don't and then um, so they're moving they're a little bit further out from the building so um we, last year we tried to kind of resolve everything and, and this year it seemed to get even more complicated. Um, so the road crew has been down a few times with the bucket loader to try to clean it up, but you know, then it snows again. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's something that, uh, um, We've been trying to fix, but uh, <laughs> it just doesn't seem to be helping. The reason they're talking on both Michael McGlynn. Because I asked him to stay up in front of the town hall. It was determined that they owned that piece of property in front of the store. So I guess that that became a problem. Yeah. 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 Is that true? Yeah. Oh, God, we've been over this a million times. There's, uh, we've been over this many times, but they do own uh, everything from their store to the road to the other side of the town hall, but is a perpetual lease to the town for the town hall site and what, what the old lease <coughs> called the uh, village green, which is the whole front part. Um, so 
They do own that, but. Uh, oh. I mean, the fire department really needs. I believe the paper court states that the town is responsible for that section as long as the town has ownership of the town hall. Once the ownership of the town hall goes back to the old store building, then they become responsible. Mm -hmm. I think the deed was 17 something. Susan Martin, you had your hand up. Uh, Ginger. Susan. Well, they're in the report. Well, they, the point is made that the last minute, the last year's minutes are in the report, and the second thing you did today was to approve the report as presented. Is there any other town business to come before the meeting? Any other town business? Mm -hmm. Sir. I just want to acknowledge Michael and Brian and Skits and Guy and Diana's efforts to close the old store and clean up that ice Yeah. That was, that was Thank you, Paul. Totally appropriate. Uh, is there any more town business that may come before the meeting? Uh, before Roy, uh, sir. All right, I'm not much of a town speaker, so kind of bear with me. Speak up, please. That better? No. That better? All right. So many of you have known I had a petition going around to make Woodbury, Vermont a Second Amendment, Article 16, Sanctuary Town. Stop right there. Uh, every once in a while, there is a subject that's raised at this part of the meeting that is something that's not within the town's purview. Uh, past examples would be uh, motions for impeachment or against uh, oil pipelines and so forth. So I'm charged with running this meeting according to Robert's uh, rules of or or <coughs> order. So. Justin, I'm going to rule uh, your talk about the Second Amendment, which is not within the town's purview, out of order. But that's not the end of it. The body, by two-thirds vote, can suspend the rules and say that this is something that is within the purview of town business you want to talk about. So at this point, Justin, if uh, I'm correct that uh, you want to talk about making Woodbury uh, a Second Amendment sanctuary town, I have to tell you that I'm going to rule it out of order because the town has no authority to do that. Uh, the state has some authority with respect to firearms regulation, <clears throat> and certainly the federal government does. The town does not because it has not been granted that specific authority. So I'm going to rule that out of order. And now, if somebody is interested in putting this issue to the next level, it's in order for somebody to make a motion to suspend the rules and address this. 
and a motion to suspend the rules is such a, a big deal under Robert's Rules of Order that it takes two-thirds of the body present to approve suspending the rules to continue this discussion. All right, Norman. There's a motion to suspend the rules to allow this discussion to continue. Is there a second? There is a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. And because this is a two-thirds vote, uh, this uh, requires a division of the House, which means you must manifest your vote. Uh, just a question. Is this to allow him to make his point, or will we be specifically voting on something beyond just allowing him to speak? Well, I presume uh, Justin, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, your, your, your aim here is to uh, advance uh, a resolution. Correct. All right. So if you say that you want to suspend the rules and allow this discussion to continue, then the discussion can continue and, and end where it will. Nevertheless, the vote is still advisory, non-binding, and uh, says what it says. Lisa Flood. Uh, so we're voting to allow Justin to speak. No, let, let me get a little technical on you. <laughs> the rules, Robert's rules, and the Vermont Supreme Court says that under this provision, of the article, the other business provision of warning in town's article, you can talk about matters that are within the town's purview. The Second Amendment is not within the town's purview to take any action on. So because the Supreme Court has said the moderator does not have to accept any resolutions or motions on matters that are outside of town purview, then what the moderator should do is to rule it out of order. But that's not the end of it. If two thirds of those present voting wish to suspend the rules and allow this to continue, then that is what will happen. Just to clarify, so then would we have another I think we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And if you do vote, if the vote is to make Woodbury a sanctuary city, it is not binding. It's, it's just not legally binding. All right. Did I explain that clearly or confusedly enough? <laughs> Angie. I just want to know, if I vote to hear Justin, I'm just hearing Justin. I hope to hear Justin and support the resolution. Is that well, I think we can assume, unless Justin says otherwise, that what he's going to pitch to us is a resolution. The two are inseparable, Justin speaking, and his, his goal of advancing a resolution. Okay. okay. Wouldn't we be able to vote whether or not, as a body, that we want to adopt the resolution that we haven't heard yet? I mean, it seems like there would be two steps, that we would vote to let Justin present the resolution, we would discuss it as a town body, and then if, and then there would be another step where the town would either vote in a non-binding way to accept the resolution or not to. I don't see how you can separate those. It's a two-step process. Right. By agreeing, maybe, maybe I'm, I think I get what's going on. By agreeing to listen is not agreeing to agree. Right. Okay? All right. 
Okay. Can we get to it? All right. So um, we're at the point where I asked the body, where I've now made the uh, ruling that this subject is uh, out of order, and now it's your turn. Someone has made the motion uh, uh, to suspend the rules to allow this discussion to continue. I believe the motion has been seconded. It was. It was. It was. Okay. All right. Um, and we've had discussion. If there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to the vote. And as I said, this is a two-thirds vote. If you vote yes to suspend the rules, then this discussion will continue. If you vote, uh, if two-thirds of you vote yes to suspend the rules, this discussion will continue. If two-thirds of you do not vote yes, then the motion, the ruling stands that it's out of order. David. Yeah, uh, I think this is a two-third vote. Maybe we can do paper, paper ballot. Um, There's a motion for a paper ballot. Is it seconded? Motion made and seconded. Now we need seven people to support having a paper ballot. All those in favor of having a paper ballot, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. I see more than seven. So if this ends in uh, the request for a resolution or a vote, uh, as a matter of fact, David, uh, I'm going to rule that out of order and reverse myself because we're not there yet. Uh, okay? So you're free to renew that motion when we get there. All right. Now, let's proceed to the vote to suspend the articles. All the, uh, to, to suspend the rules. All those in favor of suspending the rules to allow this discussion to continue, Please raise your hand. Uh, you can challenge my rule. Uh, please put them down. All those against suspending the rules, please raise your hand. All right, I'm going to make a ruling, which you can challenge, that the two-thirds level has been reached and that the rules, are, the body has decided to suspend the rules and allow this to continue. That's my ruling. Three, two, one. Okay, Justin, please proceed. All right, first of all, this is just a resolution of symbolic sorts. I'm not trying to change any laws, and we're not trying to create new laws. This is purely symbolic. We're not trying to push any laws on anybody. Just as we don't want laws pushed on us. We the people of Woodbury have taken notice of the recent growing hostility among our lawmakers towards our inalienable right of self-defense. This is evident in their attempts to pass legislation eroding our right to keep and bear arms in defense of ourselves in the state as protected by Article 16 of the Vermont Constitution and the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. <clears throat> Despite our objections and overwhelming evidence on the contrary, law-abiding gun owners continue to be blamed for the horrendous acts of violence which continue to plague our country and to a much lesser extent our state. We live in peace as all good people do, yet continue to draw attention of lawmakers attempting to fix the problem by targeting good people. While there is no doubt that our society does in fact seem to have a problem with violence, criminalizing peaceful people for owning a tool to protect their families will solve no problems and do nothing except create more criminals. The inalienable right of self-defense does not come from man or man's laws. These rights pre-exist all governments and are part of our nature's nature as persons. The founders of this country and the state of Vermont understood the importance of arms in the hands of the common man and not only a hedge against invasion, but as a deterrent to tyranny and oppression from our own government. 
Civilian-owned firearms save countless more lives every year than they take. Often, the mere presence of a gun serves as a deterrent to violence in the hands of our weakest and most vulnerable. It is for these reasons that we ask the town to adopt this resolution as a symbol of our civil disobedience to those who would attempt to render us defenseless. On that note, I'd also like to bring in mind, if anybody's been paying attention in this town for the past few years, you've had two people murdered. And we have drugs running through this town constantly. There's a house on Route 14, out of state plates there, almost at weekly. Pay attention. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm not clear on uh, whether a, a resolution was offered, but you did have a chance to uh, hear Justin and uh, register your feelings about that. So, is, yes, Mars. You can start it if you want. Goddard Graves. An inquiry is not a order. Under the suspension of the rules, is discussion allowable without a motion on the floor? Because my understanding, there is no motion on the floor. Uh, I didn't hear one, and I didn't hear a resolution. So the question uh, is, in the absence of a motion, is there any place for this discussion other than our goodwill and desire to have it? Well, my view is that having suspended the rules to allow discussion of this matter, then the matter may be discussed. We heard from uh, uh, the person advancing the case, and, and we're hearing other sides of the story now. Chance. I may be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure Justin actually read his resolution. Word for word, didn't you? I did. Okay. Well, that's the only thing I can clarify. There right. was a resolution read. Well, I'm sorry, I guess I didn't hear that. Maybe I'm stuck in uh, Congress head and have to hear it bracketed. Justin, did you have a, a resolution that you wanted to put to this body for a vote? Yes, yeah, right. All right, would you mind bringing it up to me so I can read it? was right at the top that uh, 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 Justin introduced what he was saying uh, as, a, as a resolution. And uh, I, will, I will just repeat it because apparently there's, there's a, uh, a motion 
to put this resolution to this body, okay? It should be seconded, but let me read it first and then ask you if there's a movement to put it, and then there has to be a second, okay? And it says, ladies and gentlemen, we come here tonight to request that the, the board, and I, I suppose that means the town, Justin, uh, pass this resolution declaring our town to be an Article 16 and Second Amendment constitutional sanctuary township. We, the people of blank, I'll fill in Woodbury, have taken notice of the recent and growing hostility among our lawmakers towards our inalienable, inalienable uh, right of self-defense. This is evidenced in their attempt to pass a legislation eroding our right to keep and bear arms in defense of ourselves and the state as protected by Article 16 of the Vermont Constitution and the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. Despite our objections and overwhelming evidence to the contrary, law-abiding gun owners continue to be blamed for horrendous acts of violence which continue to play our plague our country and to a much lesser extent our state. We live in peace as all good people do yet continue to draw the attention of lawmakers attempting to fix the problem by targeting good people. While there is no doubt that our society does in fact seem to have a problem with violence, criminalizing peaceful people for owning a tool to protect their families will solve no problems and do nothing except create more criminals. The inalienable right to self-defense does not come from man or man's laws. These rights pre-exist all governments and are part of our nature as persons. Uh, the founders of this country and the state of Vermont understood the importance of arms in the hands of the common man as not only a hedge against invasion, but as a deterrent to tyranny and oppression from our own government. Civilian-owned firearms save countless more lives every year than they take. Often, the mere presence of a gun serves as a deterrent to violence in the hands of our weakest and most vulnerable. <clears throat> It is for these reasons that we ask the board to adopt this resolution as a symbol of our civil disobedience to those who would attempt to render us defenseless. Uh, please pass this resolution in defense of our rights today. Thank you. Is there somebody who wants to move this resolution to the floor? Is there a motion? There is a motion. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second. We've discussed this somewhat, but this is technically the place where we can discuss additional thoughts about the motion. Susan. I'm, I'm not going to give you legal advice or interpretation of the resolution. You've heard it. Lisa Flood. Um, so I guess I want to take a moment to probably make a public service announcement on part of this discussion. Um, yeah, please. So I work for Washington County Mental Health, and we have um, joined forces in the state of Vermont with a zero suicide movement and planning. And the only two things I want to kind of let people know is that most people who attempt suicide and intervention occurs are not, they do not go on to die by suicide. Um, so that means, you know, someone has a drug overdose, someone, you know, uses some other method where intervention is possible. But where intervention is possible, they, they survive and they get treatment and they do not die by suicide in the future. 90% of people who use a firearm to, for suicide die. There's no intervention. So if nothing else, I want people to be aware that if you have someone that you know who's struggling with depression or a mental health issue, removing the guns from the home is the best solution on a temporary basis to make sure they stay alive. So thanks. 
Is there any further discussion on this resolution, ma'am? I'm pretty familiar with what's going on around gun rights in the state of Vermont. Um, I worked for the Department of Corrections my entire career, and one of the conditions in our department was that we were not going to carry weapons, and officers in the facilities were not going to carry weapons. When you carry a weapon, um, and I probably would have been the first one, um, you put yourself at risk of having whomever is attacking you take that weapon and use it on you. Now, if you're very skilled at hunting and using your rifle and doing whatever you do with it, then you're probably safe, but the majority of us aren't. And so I'm curious to know exactly what rights you think you're losing. Are you losing the right to use an automatic weapon in your yard? Are you, lo you losing the right to look at someone down your road and say, well, you know, I think they're dealing drugs out of that house and I'm sick and tired of this and I'm gonna take care of it. And off you go. Because you may not do it, but I've had experience seeing people who do do that. It's called taking the law into your own hands. And there are tons and tons and tons of issues with people who carry weapons, shouldn't be carrying them because they are not fit to hold them in their hands. The gun lobby in the United States is making absolutely sure that people who want guns can have them and do whatever they choose with them. So I would just caution us before we move forward to this to take a really close look at both sides of that argument. I grew up in a hunting family. My dad hunted, my brothers hunt, my grandfather hunted. I love it. It's a sport here. It's also a way for people to survive and provide food for their families. It's not an opportunity for someone to say, geez, Barbara, you just came up here from Massachusetts and I think you probably brought some drugs with you. You're probably smoking that pot, dirty weed. You're gone. And if you think that doesn't happen, you're wrong. My preach is over. Thanks. Thanks. Well, my opinion is, I don't understand why people think that the government's going to take their guns away. It's in the Constitution, okay? The government is not going to come and take your guns away. It's not going to happen. If I could blink my eyes and make guns not exist in this world, I would, but I can't. The other thing is, all people are asking are is for some common sense regulations. The First Amendment has regulations, okay? Try yelling fire in a movie theater, hijack on an airplane, and see what happens, okay? I don't understand why people believe only the Second Amendment cannot have some common sense regulations such as expanded background checks. Polls have shown even the NRA members, 90% of them believe in expanded background checks. A waiting period, like the woman who just spoke, uh, being a survivor of a parent who committed suicide, I can tell you that a waiting period of 48 hours isn't going to stop um, some legal gun owner from owning a gun, but it might save somebody's life. And also, raising the age to 21, you can't even buy alcohol legally till you're 21. So my thing is, first of all, I think it's just totally ridiculous that people think the government's gonna come take your guns, because they're not. And I don't understand why this even has to be an issue and why we, people are talking about common sense regulations, they're not talking about coming away to take your guns. It's just. Gary. Um, the body has authorized this conversation to take place, but I interpret uh, your request to move on as uh, to be a motion 
to call the question, which is to vote on the resolution. So, someone has made a motion to call the question. Is there a second? Second. And it's seconded. All right. There's no debate on the motion to call the question. Uh, it takes a two-thirds vote to cease debate, and then uh, if there are two-thirds of the people in here that want to cease debate and vote on the resolution, that's what we will do next after the vote to call the question. All right, so no debate on a motion to call the question that's been made and seconded. Uh, this calls for a two-thirds vote, division of the House, so once again, I'll ask you to uh, raise your hand at the appropriate time. All those in favor of calling a question, please raise your hand. Okay, please put them down. All those opposed, it appears that there's plenty of majority for two-thirds vote. In that case, we'll proceed directly to the vote. You have heard the resolution, and if you vote aye, you're in favor of the resolution. If you vote no, you're not in favor of the resolution. So let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the resolution, please. Point of order. This is a non-binding resolution. Exactly. Exactly. It's a non-binding resolution. And I'll restate my words in, in view of that observation. All those in favor of this non-binding resolution, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say no. No. It appears the no's have it, the no's do have it, and the resolution does not pass. Is there any other business to come before the meeting? Mary. Yes, I would like to make a statement in my capacity as chair. Yes, I would like to make a statement in my One of the things that I've noticed since I've had the privilege of being a lister and being trained by Ron Wells and working with um, Bob Martin is that there's something peculiar going on in town and that is called tax avoidance. Does anybody need a definition of tax avoidance? <laughs> Every time someone plays the system to reduce their taxes, you are distributing the burden of that relief onto the rest of the population of town. Now, I'm nervous saying this, because this could be a big deal, but every time you cheat legally on your taxes, I'm paying more, you're paying more, you're paying more. Is that fair? I don't think so. The school budget alone would have been covered by the amount of land <clears throat> value that's in, what is it called, common use. School budget, that's a million plus. Does anybody need clarification on that? Okay. Yes. I'm sorry? The amount, the value of taxes yeah. forgiven in common use, well, it's current, use. Current. current use, current use, surpasses the school budget and has for years. So here we come every year bitching and moaning about the school budget and people who have to live in hovels and people can't do this and people can't do that. It's because the system is not working the way it's supposed to. Ginger, I'm talking on please Woodbury. Please wait to be recognized. Woodbury. So, now that I've put myself out there, you can vote me out of office. I really don't care at this point. But I really believe this is an issue. And I think it's really, really unfair that people that have the resources and the lawyers and the accountants can game the system while other people who are working two and three jobs to pay their taxes get screwed. And this is not unique to Woodbury in Vermont. It's a law that went into effect 
and now so many people know how to get around it that they're screwing the rest of us. Can I afford to pay my taxes? Yes. Do I pay my taxes? Yes. So I don't go out to dinner and I don't take a trip and I don't buy my kid a car or give them my land. But that's not how it's supposed to work if everyone in this town stands equal. So, I apologize for being late to this meeting, but I didn't know whether or not I could do this. And it's taken me a couple hours to get up the nerve to come here and say this. And um, I'm not talking about people who are doing it right. I'm talking about people who finagle and legally cheat. Can't go after them because it's legal. And you know who you are, and we know who you are. <laughs> the listers know who you are. Get our guns and if you could put your head on the pillow every night and say, good job, I can go to Florida next month. There it is. Too bad our legislators aren't here to hear you. Please wait for the record. <laughs> you can tell I'm nervous. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Mary. Is there any other business to come before the meeting? Any other business to come before the meeting before I urge you to patronize the Friends of Woodbury Elementary School? And I ask Roy to do the... <laughs> motion to adjourn is non-debatable. But is there a second? Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, the, the, ayes, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Bon appetit. See you next year.